please consider leaving us your thoughts in the comment section, as well as giving this video a like, and subscribing to our channel. Also, check out the link in the description below. Click the link to enjoy a free bonus Hastings Mystery Theater episode. Thanks again, for your kind support, that enables us to continue bringing you these great old classic black and white movies. Coming soon, to Hastings Mystery Theater. Eyes in the Night, it's a 1942 mystery film, aided by his trusty seeing eye dog, blind investigator Duncan McLean, played by Edward Arnold, takes on a case of an old acquaintance, Norma Lowry, starring Anne Harding. Good evening. Welcome to Hastings Mystery Theater. I'm your host and mystery master, Randall Schaefer. We interrupt this program with a community safety alert. Please stand by. Warning. It has been reported that certain unidentified community offenders are at large, said perpetrators have been known to be a detriment to our peaceful community environment. They are described as being rude, cranky and excessively critical, though constructive criticisms are welcome, these individuals desire to assert their control over our community structure, with little contribution to its overall well-being. Authorities advise to stay clear of these individuals, and assure that they will soon be apprehended. That is all. Good citizens. We now return to our regularly scheduled program. Tonight the corridors and mystery take us back to 1930 for a Paramount production, The Benson Murder Case. This is another Philo Vance mystery. Philo Vance was the literary creation of S.S. Van Dyne, and the books were bestsellers in the 1920s and 1930s, so of course the movies had to pick up Philo Vance. But as written, Philo Vance is an intriguing character, but not a friendly one. He was a wealthy aristocrat by both birth and attitude, and he believed himself better than most people. Well, such a personality would not be popular on the silver screen, so the movies made Philo Vance a pleasant young man who helped the police as a hobby. Well, this change made the movies even more popular than the books, and they were bestsellers. Several studios were making Philo Vance movies and several different actors played Philo Vance. Tonight, Philo Vance is played by William Powell. He was born in Pittsburgh in 1892 and he landed his first starring role in the movies, also playing Philo Vance in The Canary Murder Case. That was in 1929. That was his first starring role. In 1935, he played in a movie with Gene Harlow. This led to a real serious romance, but Gene Harlow died before they got married. And about this same time, William Powell was diagnosed with cancer. Well, this double whammy caused him to curtail his career for several years. The cancer was treated with radiation, which was experimental at the time, and two years later, the cancer was gone and never returned. In 1940, he married Diane Lewis. They were married for 44 years until his death in 1984, at the age of 91. In tonight's movie, a ruthless stockbroker is murdered right in front of Philo Vance. Yet it's not obvious who committed the murder. Well, this will be very embarrassing if Philo Vance cannot solve this one. So he has to really be on the ball tonight. Let's return to 1930 and enjoy the Benson murder case.
Come on, come on, get a move on. Yes. Well, well. She said she can't cover him. Well, I tell Joy to tell him yes, out. Yes, sir. That's the company. Yes, I will. Joy, I'm supposed to leave. Oh, I am so sorry. Why is the man? Oh, shut up. No. Oh, I don't know. But, hello, Marla. Show me. I must see you. Well, all right, all right. Come on to me, off. Oh, Mr. Bassett. Yes. We're all cleaned up now, except for that one big account. Oh, uh, you mean Greg? Uh, yes, sir. Well, what does he say of us now? 380,000. You tried to notify him? All day yesterday and today. Well, try... Oh, never mind. Sell him out. Sell him out. Well, you heard me. Close yes. him out. Uh, Miss uh, Lester, get those smaller packages out of the safe and bring them to my office. Yes, sir. Well, Joy, you it is most necessary. I get the package. All right, all right, in a minute. Miss Lester. Oh, thank you. Well, here they are, and you have a note to me, too. Pay the note, and you get back the pearls. Uh, uh, the note's due tomorrow. Well, I, I, I can't pay. Oh, then you don't get this or this, since you can't pay the note. Oh, it's only I, you're not mad, Brad. Sure. If I weren't, you wouldn't forge my name to this check, would you? Oh, uh, <laughs> Yes? All right, tell her I'll see you in a minute. Well, I, I must have it, Inspector. Try and get it. Well, if you don't give it to me, I'll... Now, listen, you won't do anything. Who do you think I am, one of your faded widows? And I'm not very afraid of male lapdogs. Well, well, interesting. Hearing men fight over something besides me for a game. Miss Delroy, Mr. Marlowe. Hello, Delphi. Hello, Fanny. He knows you, too? What are you all a Twitter about, anyway? You, uh, borrowed these from your meal ticket, didn't you? And she's in Paris, isn't she? Well, you better pay me somehow and return her before she gets back, hasn't you? Yes? What did he mean, your meal Paris? Where did you think I picked what I gave you? From the tree? Mrs. Banning is? Who? Tell her I'll see her in a minute. Well, old boy, your meal ticket's back. Perhaps she brought you a Parisian dog. Oh. <laughs> what is this? What's that dowager's delight got that I have? When you're a big boy, maybe I'll tell you. Yes? Well, let me tell you something. Dog, we sold you out of the market this morning. You haven't got a dime. You, you didn't. Yes, but as dear as my own, why didn't you cable me you were coming? My dear Dolly, I did cable. You just must have been out. Oh, I was hunting in the mountains. Uh, and I was dying for you to come back to me. But what did you come here for, Paula? Do not tell me you're blocked in the market. My dear boy, I don't know. I only heard of this question I arrived this morning. I've been nearly frantic. But of course, Tony Benson would carry me. Oh, there, yeah. yes. Where is Tony? Oh, w wait, wait. Tony Benson, you're a cold smell. Aren't you? No wonder I can't go for you. You could have given me another day to cover. You didn't answer one of our margin calls. Oh, I was going to bring you my pearls, but... Say, what's in that box? Now, 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 now. Oh, Tony, darling. I simply must know what happened to my house. You, uh, you carried me, of course. No, you were a little overweight. Oh, Mr. Gray, excuse me. We tried to get in touch with you. Well, I've been out of town. I was going to mail these to you. Uh, you see, you were the last account we had that wasn't covered, so... Uh... I understand. Uh, Mr. Gray, would you mind waiting in the waiting room? Uh, there's someone in Mr. Spencer's office. Yeah, all right. Yes, I told you off. All of you. All except Adolf, who wasn't even in. No, it's something else your dear Adolf owed me for. Not the market. Yes, oh, and I'm going to... Never get... mind. Oh, you're busy, Tony. No, come in, Harry. The storm seems to be arriving. It looks as if one has already arrived. I'll come back when you're alone. All right, Harry. I have nothing more to say. You are not a gentleman, Mr. Benson. You're a... You're I a... know. I'm a smell. Well, is it my fault that you're on the high seas when the market breaks? I've a good mind to... You won't do anything. Marla said he would, but he won't. None of you will. Oh, I suppose if you could, I'd be a cop by now. Well, you were called on for margins, weren't you? You wanted to have your cake and eat it too. Easy money, quick profit. Well, you gambled and you lost. Yes, you lost. Mr. Benson. You lost, I tell you. Johnny, dear, I haven't done anything to say to this person. The way he talks. With what I've got on him, oh, go on. Get out of here, all of you. Go on. Go on, get out. Leave me alone. I'm all in. Hello, Miss Lester. Get my chauffeur at the garage. And tell him to meet me at the club at 6 o'clock, yes. I'm going to spend the night at my place up the river, and I don't want to be disturbed. All right. 
Yes, come in, Harry. Even the heavens seem to be crashing. Say, Harry, why don't you spend the night with me if I place up the river? That's not a bad idea. We can uh, meet at the club at six o'clock and have a steam and a rub down before we go. I'm nervous. Well, I don't blame you. After that gang that was just in here, they don't like you, do they? Well, maybe not. You know, Harry, I'm sorry I had to send you out. But then you big shots are used to taking it on the chin. Not twice in succession. Twice? Uh, big Drake walked off with 180 grand of mine last week. He did? Yes. He high carded me. Oh. Harry, why don't you quit that racket? I like it. Harry. You're not sore at me, are you? I haven't made up my mind yet. Got the jump. No wonder. After what you did to me today. Oh, well. Those crybabies at the office got on my nerves. Well, I put a couple of twos and twos together, watching Delroy and Marla. Oh, let's go to bed, eh? Oh, I left my bag at your club. I'll phone for it. You'll have to rough it, though. I let the servants go for the winter. Backfire, I guess. Oh, Markham's car, maybe. Who's? Markham. The district attorney. You know him, don't you? We've had a couple of talks. What's he doing here? He's got a place next to mine. He's up here arresting for the campaign. Like that. Do you have a drink? What? With yourself. Oh, Tony! Who's that? It's Gray. I I'll get rid of it now. Friend of yours, huh? Judy, I want oh, Excuse me, please. My coat. You were leaving, perhaps? What? Oh, not at all. What was the noise out back? Window blew shut. Must have been open. Tony, I must plead for my poor Dolly. He had no idea he was doing anything wrong when he signed that check. You were such friends. I shouldn't have left him. Then you better pay his note to me. 
My dear Tony, I have 10,000. I tell you, I've lost everything, and the banks won't advance me another cent. What are you doing here? Not my dear Anthony, that it's difficult to get. Oh, Mrs. Pot. Pot? Yes, calling the kettle black. <laughs> you girls ought to get together on Mara, Paula. Who do you suppose he was running around with while you were in... Paula, I think you'd better go upstairs. Woman, for posh. You for me. What's your name? Your name? Harry, to you. What's yours? Fanny, to you. Oh, Tony. Let's have a party, hmm? Oh. <laughs> Are you going to give me that case? No. I would. Now, look here. Say, what is this? What's going on here, anyway? Have you got a flashlight? Yes, there's one over here. Come on. There it is. Here, I'll go. I want that jewel case Mahler gave you, and I'll get it. For what? Nothing. Oh, well, we'll see about that. Do you think you can hang on to Marla with Paula Banning back? And if she finds out he's been running around with you, where will you be? She'll stop his allowance. You know, uh, he hasn't told her about your pearls. I'll take care of that. Yeah? Well, you'll take care of his note somehow if you want this. Say, why all this frenzy about a few pearls? There are plenty more where these came from, aren't there? What about this, anyway? I have to sell them. You sold me out, didn't you? Oh, well, let's have a look. Uh, listen, now, wait a minute. Oh. <laughs> I, I, I fell in. Uh, I'm, I'm glad you are here. Uh, Tony might have misconstrued my uh, arriving this way, had he been alone. You know, well, he's certainly got plenty of company now. Hey, what are you people trying to do anyway? Remove this guy? Oh, no, no. <laughs> well, let's go upstairs. Yes, yeah, sir. I'll tell you why I won't in four words. I don't like you. As if you liked all your playmates. <laughs> I've had to put up with a lot of you big businessmen to get somewhere. But now I'm there. I'm putting up with the ones I pick. And I told you a year ago I wasn't picking you. Your eyes are too close together, get it? And let this sink under that toupee of yours. I'm going to get that jewel case of mine. Oh, I beg your pardon. Tony. This was the big noise. Oh, hello, Tony. Hello, Ed. Oh, Fanny. Dorothy. Is that my boy? Paula, what are you doing here? Oh, oh. carrying tears about me, eh? No, but that might be a good idea. When you told me he would put you in jail, I simply had to come here and throw myself on this mercy. Tony. He's my heart. Oh, please, be quiet. You know, please. while you've been away, he's been playing the boss a bit. Dolly, it's not no, true. Don't, don't change the subject. Give him that money. Do you want him to put me in the jail? Can't let him. Kill him first. If you don't mind, I have first call on him for that. Well, that makes it unanimous. Farewell, Caesar. Or oh, shall we say it with flowers? Say, so what is this? Must be my birthday. Oh, Marcus, Hello, come baby. in. I just dropped by. Oh, I beg your pardon. That's quite all right. Come in. Ah, thunder and lightning. Enter the villain. <laughs> How are you, Mr. District Attorney? Hello, May. Uh, Miss Delroy, Mr. Marcus. Hello. And uh, Mr. Marla. Excuse me. You'll have to put me up for the night. I punctured a tire. Plenty of room. Thanks. Gray, you must be behaving yourself. The newspapers haven't accused you of anything for months. I can't imagine what you're talking about. No. <laughs> well, they better. 
I want to talk to you about the market upset. I suppose there'll be some trouble, and I think you can give me the advice I need. Well, let me take your call. Co no, thank you. I have a friend winning up. Well, by the way, Gray, he'd like to meet you. You mind if I bring him in? Not at all. Thank you. You know, Markham seems to be quite interested in you. Well, if he is, it won't do him any good. Paula is so upset that uh, you don't mind if she lies down for a moment. I shall prepare her something. Sure. We've all been too excited anyway. There you are, Gray. Philo Vance. Mr. Benson. How, How do you do, Mr. Harry Gray. Gray? Not the detective. It is. Only as an amateur, remember. Our friend Sergeant Keeve insists on that. <laughs> Vance told me that he's getting rusty. Nothing to sharpen his psychology on since the Green murder. Yes, I felt rather hurt that you didn't call me in on that Green business. Take off your coats, gentlemen, won't you? I'll get some ice. Thank you. You see, Mr. Vance, down at headquarters, they've got an idea that I know all about these crimes. Oh, really? Right. You and, uh, of course, Ben. Well, those killers of his, at least the ones I've read about, it seems to me they're all amateurs, too. Yes, so they were. That's why Markham thought it might be amusing, without disturbing my status as an amateur, remember, for me to uh, meet an authority on professionals. Harry, get some cups. We'll have coffee. Right. Won't you sit down, Mr. Ben? Thank you. Benson, in the market at you. Well, you you never heard of a bootlegger drinking his own stuff, did you? <laughs> Strange you two should drop in here this evening on top of everybody wanting to murder everybody else. Uh, market, of course. Oh, we need another bottle. Well, I'll get it. Oh, here are the keys. And by the way, be careful of that burglar alarm in the cellar. I think that burglar alarm would interest you, Mr. Bass. No? It's a rather tricky arrangement. Later on, I'd like to show it to you. It's not in his room. He must be still in his pocket. I'll get it. I'll make him give to me. Be quiet, be quiet. Coffee will be ready soon. Darling, why can't you get money? Does my affection for you mean so little? Oh, me? Well, to tell you the truth, darling, all that, that glitters is not gold. Oh, my boy, oh, my boy. But he'll put me in the jail. Never. I tell you, yes, he hates me because of the Delaware woman. Well, all I did was look at her. Can I help if she loves me? But I am true only to you, my star, only to you. But this Benson, who calls himself our friend, he is jealous of me. So, you will lose me for the jail. I'll, I'll hate him. We'll, we'll both hate him. Oh, my boy. Oh, my boy. Well, the most important thing is not to get the envelope, yes, the check, the yes, note. Yes. Oh, you jelly. Oh. That's how they kill in books, Mr. Vance. But the way it's really done is quite different, I see. Then your thought is that if I had matched wits with a professional, I might not have been so uh, lucky, is that it? That's it. No thanks. Oh, I'll get you some coffee in a minute, Mr. Markham. Well, oh, I've had this bottle myself of several years, Markham. Before prohibition. <laughs> Naturally. <laughs> Oh, if you'll excuse me, I'll see what the ladies are doing. It's very interesting to get your point of view, Mr. Vance. Just how would you stack your cards against a professional? Well, it's my theory, Mr. Gray, that the only infallible method of determining human guilt is by analyzing the psychological factors of the crime and then applying them to the individual. The point is, in these cases of yours, Vance, the gun, the gun, that's newspaper slang for killer, Marvin. Hey. What I mean to say is that these killers you've met always used a lot of trickster, a lot of props. The professionals don't. 
from what I hear, they bang them neat and leave them where they lay. Exactly. That's one of the reasons they're so seldom caught. In other jurisdictions, I mean. You mean to tell me that you'd ignore all tangible evidence of the crime? Not ignore it, no, but neither would I accept it for gospel on its face value. Well, I'm, I'll make that call. Oh, excuse me. Why don't you go in my room to dry your things? There's a fire there. Thanks. I want that jewel case. I'll get it, you know. Yes, all right. Later on, when they when they leave downstairs, we'll uh, talk it over, eh? Will we? I'll be back. Listen, I'm going to get that jewel case. All right. I'll be back. The juries have to depend on circumstantial evidence, Marco. They can't understand any other kind. Newspaper slang for uh, bombs, Mr. Gray. Thanks. Okay. Get back to our conversation, Vance. How do you think you'd come out with one of these bang him and leave him lay killings that we were talking about? By a professional, you mean? Exactly. Well, it might be rather interesting. Have you anything in that line, Markham? That's uh, Dr. Gray. Well, I seem to have quite a reputation in this town. For the killing. Well, perhaps something could be arranged. Splendid. Fence. Nothing here. He's dead. Oh. 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 Give me the medical examiner's office, please. Somebody must have overheard that conversation of ours. Yeah, it's exactly what was occurring to me. I want to speak to Dr. DeRemus personally. Well, there you are, Mr. Vance. Do your stuff. Well, that's that. Yeah. 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 The dawn coming up like thunder across the Hudson outside the lodge disclosed the cold body being kept warm by a steamer run. Hurry up with that phone and give me a match. The first to arrive on the scene was the brains of the homicide squad. Sergeant E for Edward. Ernest. Sergeant Edward He, Or as I nicknamed him in one of my more brilliant moments, Edward Sleuth. So as everybody would know, he was a detective. Well, can that stuff. Now listen, whenever I've got anything to give you, Scribe, I'll tell you. Yeah? Who's gonna tell you? Anybody could have got up and down those back stairs without being seen. Where's Well? Up going over the bedroom. I tended to that. You get outside and look around the grounds. All right. Say, what's ailing you? 
I got sold out in the stock market. No. Yeah, I lost 90 bucks. Wiped out. Well, by the way, Mr. Markenbone, Mr. Vance would be here right away. Oh, yeah? Well, I'll try and arrange it so that I'll be just gone when the time he gets here. Oh, well. How do you spell clue? What day was it make? There ain't any. Oh, I wouldn't say that, sir. Oh. Good morning, Sergeant. Why, hello, Mr. Vance. No go, Sam. I'm afraid the blue in that is going to clash. Check that pole in the hall, Well, Blue, Sergeant, is a very tricky color. You know, in spite of its commonness, it's quite difficult. But that's anomalous, of course. Oh, so it is, so it is. Uh, Mr. Vance, you know, apart my obscurity, but sometimes I don't quite follow you. Really, Sergeant? No, now, a while ago there, I said there wasn't any clues. And you said that you wouldn't say that. Well, I wouldn't. Really? That was the Times calling. They want to know if you... You tell the Times that when they get my name right, they might get a story. You see, Sergeant, I decided to spend the night here in, uh, in meditation. So I phoned Sam to bring out my things, and I, uh, meditated. Any luck? I've been studying that little derringer that was found at the top of the stairs there last night. It's rather unique. Yes, ain't it? And, of course, the lady's handbag, which you no doubt found in Benson's room there. Yes, I got that right here. Cherche la femme, eh, Sergeant? Oui. But I was told to come by telephone. I was to ask for Mr. Vance. Hey, did you get that? Well, you go inside. Hey, is Milo Vance on this one? I don't know. Is he inside? I wish I knew. Hey, come on, come on. The here's at 6 a.m. Uh -oh. The Vance is here, he's at Santa Claus. He must have come down the chimney. <laughs> well, so one of those two dames owns this bag. Well? Mr. Vance? Oh, yes, come in. You know, Sergeant, when Albert here popped in last night, Markham thought that he was Gray's man. Gray, Gray. Oh, no, sir. As I explained to Mr. Vance when he called me up this morning, Mr. Benson was my employer. He telephoned me last night to bring Mr. Gray's bag from the club. What's your name? Albert Brecker. The medical examiner's here. Show him up. And you stick around. Thank you. Well, another dizzy dame to do some jury vamping, I suppose. Whether any woman was in this room with Benson immediately prior to the murder. Uh, that's what I wanted Albert for, to verify. Good morning, Sergeant. All right, now. Bless my soul, Mr. Vance. Why, I haven't seen you since we laid the Green family to rest. Quite right. <laughs> there was a lovely murder case for you, Sergeant. Bless my soul, yes. I was there. Well, hop at the body, Doc. Uh, certainly, certainly. Have one of your men uh, give me a hand, please. Surely. Oh, uh, I'm sorry I wasn't here last night. Wedding anniversary. My wife and I always celebrate. <laughs> Went to a hockey match. How's the election coming? Fair. Good. Now, Mr. Benson kept his toupee beautifully, didn't he? He was a bit touchy about himself, if I do say. Vain, you mean. Yes, sir. Well, what guy with a list of phone numbers he had wouldn't be? Elementary, my dear Albert. Elementary. Sergeant, you've been reading Sherlock Holmes. Quite right, my dear Watson. Quite right. Oh, well. Take care of these, will you? This was Mr. Benson's favorite to pay, sir. Fancy. Oh, no, sir. I once worked for a gentleman that had seven. One for every day in the week to correspond to the natural growth of his hair. Uh, Albert, uh, do you think that Mr. Benson would have appeared before a lady in whom he was interested without his to pay? Oh, no, sir. He would rather have died. Well, he got his wish. The doc said he was shot at about six feet, and no powder marks. Well, suicide's out, unless Benson was an acrobat. If you don't mind, sir, I... Of course. Thank you, Albert. I'll see you later. Thank you, sir.
You know, Mr. Vance, this is the kind of a murder that the public likes. Have you any suggestions? You know, you might have. You were here when it happened. Well, Sergeant, after a night of meditating on what happened before the murder, I have suggestions no end. Oh, Burke's got something out front, Sergeant. Be right down. Oh, Mr. Markham told me about the stuff Harry Gray was saying to you. Like he was leading up to the shooting to kind of try you out. The nerve of that gorilla. What's Gray's history? Well, he's suspected of a lot of things. Ever been convicted? Too smart. Just what is his record? Well, rumor has it that he's the big shot in a bootlegging ring. You know, I still don't like the way he talked to you. <laughs> Had to use the kitchen table. <laughs> Killed about midnight. Direct fire into the heart. A weakling shot and never knew what hit him. Bless my soul, no. Well, he must have seen the guy. Come and have a look at the bullet. Most interesting. I'll be right with you. Come on, let me... Never mind, okay. never mind. Sir. Yeah? One of the boys found this a bush. I had it in my hand. In your hat. In hand, Jim. Yeah, all right. Come on, give us a break. Let's see it. Oh, quiet down, will you? What was it? Right, I got that. Handbag. Uh, right here. Gun. Got that, too. Give me that piece of paper I found in the wood box. There. Get that phone. Look at this, Mr. Vance. Yeah, I'll tell him. It's an empty jewel case that we found in a bush outside. Been thrown out the window. Last night, maybe. And here's the paper it was wrapped in that I found in the wood box right there. It's marked Mahler. Interest to us later. Yeah, I'll tell him. But Mr. Vance, with the election coming up Tuesday and the papers riding us the way they are, I've got to have something now. Well, what about that small puddle of blood on the second step from the top there? Hasn't that any particular significance to you? Oh, Sergeant, they picked up Delroy down at the Grand Central. He's trying to beat it out of town. Delroy. Yes, yes. I'll be right down. Mr. Vance, your car is here. Thank you. Together, well. Say, Mr. Vance, who did this? The four Marx brothers. Oh, hello, Vance. Good morning, Mr. Gray. Anything new? Well, you called my hand last night. I'm still stuck. I, uh, I'm afraid I took up that challenge of yours to solve a murder by a professional too soon. This was no professional job. Oh, Albert, that door. Thank you. Everybody there, including me, threatened to kill Benson. They were all sought, that financial genius. Mm. What's the matter? Albert, get that door. You know, somehow I had the impression that uh, Albert was Mr. Benson's man. Uh, so he was. I just took him on today. You see, Benson's dress ties were always tied smart. And Albert there was the boy who tied them. That's it. I see. Oh, come in, Frank. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Uh, those two women that were there last night, Vance, never get mixed up with women. They're dynamite. No brains. Mm. Just say, sir? Yes. You see, I don't let just anybody put a razor on me. Neither did Napoleon. As I read about that, that's where I got the idea. Now, uh, Mr. Gray, I wondered if I could get you to help me out. Sure, I'd better, or they'll be indicting me again. If everything those birds tried to pin on me stuck, I'd have worn out a carload of electric chairs by now. You see, my business makes me acquainted with a lot of tough mugs. And Markham and that detective Heath call me in every time an automobile backfires. <laughs> but I don't mind. That's their job. Yes, so it is. Well, Mr. Gray, something the police overlooked at the Benson Lodge seems to point to one of the guests there last night. And I thought perhaps you might know someone who would look into his room, his hotel room for me, professionally. Well, I asked them all, are they? Well, I know a stool pigeon that you might use as a bellhop. Of course, he'd have to have a package or something that he was delivering in case someone walked in on him. Very Ready. good. Wasn't looking for me, were you, Albert? Come on in here. See here, Gray. Oh, you're here. Oh, yes, Sergeant, I'm here. Well, I wasn't but a minute behind you on this one. I'm taking you downtown. Get in there and get ready. 
But, sir, please... Get your me. hat. What's the idea? You too, Gray. Mr. Markham's got some questions he wants to ask both you boys. All right. Just as soon as I'm through here. Didn't I tell you they tried to pin this on me? Oh, you never killed Benson. Not personally, you didn't. But when I learned that Albert here was working for Benson yesterday, and for Gray today, well, I don't have to explain that to you, Mr. Vance. Hurry up, Albert. No. Albert the murderer and Gray the accessory, huh? Certainly the rest of our little group won't object to that, will they, Mr. Gray? Uh, hardly. I'm on my way to Knopf, Sergeant. Exhibition of Japanese prints. I'll see you later, no doubt, if you'll excuse me. So long. Hurry up and get him washed up. All right. The bag's mine. I was in his room then. After climbing in the back window. Why? How did you find out? Well, Harry Gray was present, you know, you know. But Gray's out of it. He was in the kitchen making coffee. I see. Harry Gray can't tangle me in this. Why did you try to leave town? Find out, if you can. Don't be so picturesque. I'm not a jury. Oh, you're a fool if you think I... Why did you go to that house? To talk to Benson about my account. He sold me out. We quarreled. Then you needed money. No. Did you, uh... Ever seen that before? No. Benson was interested in you. Suppose we say that he attacked you. Well? If you'll excuse me, uh, your reputation is well known. The Bortheim suicide two years ago. The case of... Never mind that. I've liked men in my time. They've liked me. What of it? I didn't like Tony Benson, but I didn't kill him. If my thoughts could have killed the swine, he'd have been dead long ago. The rest of me in the reception room there. Wait, please. Sergeant? Yes, Chief. Get Marla and Mrs. Banning in. Yes, and you want that ballot of Gray's, too, when I'm through with him. You know, Chief, there's something funny about... Now, never mind that now, Sergeant. Delroy seemed upset. I don't wonder. You barked at her. You shouldn't bark at the ladies, old man. Oh, I'm busy. This is not the only case in New York. And you're not helping me any. You're more flippant than usual today. Well, this was a particularly flippant murder, Markham. And if you go on trusting clues like those, you will be prettier still. Have you a clue? I have instructed my lawyer. Get out. Well, I can't conceive who would want good old Tony out of the way. Well, we were just planning our fall hunting trip for this month. Oh, you hunt, Mr. Marla. Be quiet, oh, Dolly. You keep out of it. You will have both of us. that? Oh, I love to hunt. I love to hunt. I was with the sir at one day. Never mind all that. This envelope with your name on it was found in Benson's desk. It contains three very interesting documents. Then it was useless. He didn't have it with him. What was the useless? Police police power. The first <laughs> is a canceled check of Benson's made out to Adolf Marla for $10,000. Oh, the second is a confession signed by you admitting this check to be a forgery. And the third is a note for $10,000 made out to Anthony Benson, signed by Adolf Mahler. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, I, I, I should have mentioned those things before. You know, my financial arrangements were not all one could desire. I so shouldn't have let you. <laughs> unfortunately, to um, uh, protect Madame Starks, uh, Mr. Benson required ten thousand dollars. Oh, and you saw you forged his name. Oh, you mean it would have been a forgery if he had made a complaint? Well, it's a sense he can't make one now. Uh, it's a forgery just the same, Sergeant. But I'll take that up later. He forges Benson's name, pays him back with his own money. Marvelous. Well, I explained it to dear old Sony at once, of course, and offered him this note, which falls due today. Uh, yes, and. Uh, you mean to tell me that, that Benson accepted your note without security? Oh, well, naturally. Yeah, well, what was wrapped in this piece of paper, which was found in the uh, wood box with your name on it? And, uh, Tony gave me a party for my birthday and presented me with a gold pencil. I had it uh, some... You uh, didn't tell me it was your birthday. Oh, please, Paul, be quiet. You will get me in the electric chair. But darling, oh, I... You will come with me. <laughs> this is the security that you gave Benson for that note. Oh, so Miss Darrow told you. Who? Those first are Miss Darrow, and she threatened to kill Benson herself. Delroy? Yes, she's a snake, that woman. I'm through, I'm, I'm finished with her. 
Now you are the wolf to me again, darling. You think I would accompany you through your sordid affair? Oh, Weezy. Miss Darrow loaned me her first. And what I... a lovely liar. He bought them for me one day and stole them the next. So, Adolf, that's what became of the money I sent you to cover my margin. No wonder you forged that check. Why, you, you were doing sneaking into Benson's house last night. Both of you, why did you quarrel with him? I wanted to get back that confession of forgery. He threatened to put Adolf in jail. Mr. Markham, Adolf's all I have now, except the money that makes him love me. You threatened to kill Benson yourself, didn't you? Yes. Well, who didn't? Mr. Markham, may I have that jewel case? Mr. Gray is here, sir. Oh, send him in. There's never one in the other room. Sergeant? In here, please. You through with my valet yet? We are not. In a minute, Gray. Well, Mr. Detective, the newspaper boys are certainly having a lot of fun with you. Being on the scene of the crime last night. Mm. They don't seem to take your presence at the scene of the murder quite so humorously. No one ever laughs at me. They used to when I was a kid. But I taught them not to. But you, Philo Vance, the famous amateur detective, to be in on the draw and then raised out. How do you stand it? Perhaps I haven't completed my draw. I'll see you later, Gray. Why not? I'm used to that, Markham. Lance, Delroy is bluffing. Did you notice that she didn't even ask if her pearls were still there? No, because she knew they weren't. Because she got them. Oh? She tried to leave town, didn't she? Where was she going, do you know? Yes, Boston. Oh, Vance, I'm tired. I'm tired of all these human passions and lies and... You don't suppose they'll beat us in the election Tuesday, do you? Solving this case won't lose you any votes. Well, I have solved it. Sergeant, these complications, Marla and, and Mrs. Banning and that fool ballot simply obscure the direct evidence against Delroy. Yes, Chief. Sergeant, exhibit A, B and C versus Fanny Delroy. Label them for the grand jury. I am going to ask for her indictment this afternoon. On that evidence? Lance, I may not know Japanese art, but I am still district attorney of New York. Defense counsel in the McGuire case, sir. You'll have to wait. Are they to be detained here? Sergeant, they heard Miss Delroy over to the custody of a matron. Yes, sir. Uh, have Miss O'Brien over to Chief's office right away. Yeah. Don't make a mistake, old man. You can't afford to. If you'll show me where I am, I'd like to show you. Are uh, some bits of stringy fuzz across the front of Benson's waistcoat. You have that waistcoat, of course. It's in the medical examiner's office. What's that got to do with it? Have I ever let you down? Well, no. Well, suppose we take a look at that waistcoat, then. All right. Charlie Courthouse. Yes, sir. Lance, this looks like a wild goose chase to me. Oh, Bob, Bob. Uh, suppose you turn east at the next corner. Oh! That shot, Vance. Stop the car. No, no, my apartment, quick! That shot was not for me, Markham. I had a silencer on that gun. What makes you think the bullet was meant for you? Something I said in your office. It must have been overheard. By whom? All the possibilities were there, weren't they? Well, I still think it's Delroy. But, Markham, do women kill merely to recover a string of pearls? Well, suppose Benson had forced his attention on her. Suppose that he attempted to... Uh... Can you imagine Benson, with his vanity, attempting anything without his toupee? I've got it. What do you mean? Albert. The minute you told me that Albert brought that handbag out to Gray that night... Gray simply went out there to spend the night with Benson, who was nervous, nervous. Well, he picked a swell chaperone. Yeah, Gray forgot and left his bag in Benson's room at the club. Benson phoned and Albert brought it out, that's all. And where did Albert go after that? He claimed that he took the train back to town. That's no alibi. Well, he only started working for Benson six weeks ago. 
And when I photographed him, he nearly threw a fit. You know, Markham, because Albert refuses to tell the police the history of his life, Sergeant insists that he's a gunman in disguise. Well, he's a foreigner. Well, my case against Delroy. So, Sergeant, you tell Smithers to prepare the indictment. Yes, sir. Now, just a moment. I'm not going to let you make fools of yourself. Markham until tomorrow night, let me handle this in my own way. Now, if you don't, on the day after tomorrow, the morning papers and I, not you, will have solved the murder of Anthony Benson. And that's election day. You stopped me last night from proceeding, but I saw fit. And I got a bullet in my arm. Delroy had the real motive. Oh, motive. Drop a nickel in the slot and get a motive. Everybody has some motive for murdering somebody. Yeah, be careful somebody doesn't murder you. No, nobody's going to get him, Chief. I'll watch over you, Mr. Vance. Thank you, Sergeant. Oh, uh, tell me, did that firearms expert of yours say when he would know about those bullets? Uh, sometime today. I'll see him. And if you don't mind, Markham, I'd like to have Miss Delroy's jewel case brought to me here this afternoon. Right. Then I want a policewoman. A policewoman? Yes. You say, I can handle anything in this case. Well, very good, Sergeant. This is a little job of chambermaiding in a hotel. Oh. Oh. This is the bullet that killed Benson. The rifling marks on it correspond exactly with the rifling on the inside of the barrel of that gun you picked up after the murder. This one is the one that hit Mr. Markham. The same kind of a bullet fired from the same kind of a gun. But the trouble is that this is such a special make that I don't understand how there could be two of them exactly alike around here. Excuse me, Mr. Vance. Oh, yes, well, here's the picture of those fingerprints you wanted. Oh, good. And uh, that coffee can, you left it there, all right. Yes, sir. Stuck it back on the kitchen shelf. Thank you. What gets me is Sergeant Heath said there was no explosion when Markham was shot. Now, this type of gun was designed in Russia during the Revolution for the protection of the women of the aristocracy. A few drifted to Paris and were copied to the underworld. But there was never a silencer manufactured for that gun. Ah, but there was, Captain. In this article by the late Bale of the Paris police, both the gun and its tiny silencer are described. You might keep that copy for your file. Thank you. Thank you. And, Captain, if there should be a call for me, I'll be at the reference room at the time. I'll let you know. Goodbye. Goodbye. But for strength of composition, Mr. Vance, and for unusual delicacy of line, I would... Oh, Sam. Pardon me. Yes, is sir. Mr. Markham all right? Well, no, sir. Sergeant Keith is with him. As I was saying, Mr. Vance, I could do no better than to recommend to you these three very choice examples of the Ukiyo-e school. Now, these, Mr. Vance, are a rare opportunity. If you don't take advantage of it, sir, I assure you, you'll regret it to your... Hey, hey. Who are you? Who am I? Who are you? Oh, pardon me, Sergeant. This is my print dealer. He's not dangerous. Oh. If you would step aside, please. Mr. Vance... These three. I better take that door, Mr. Vance. You know, we can't be too careful today. All right, Sergeant. Oh, by the way, you haven't forgotten that jewel case, have you? Right here. Thank you. Of course, Mr. Vance, I don't want to force these upon you. I have in the portfolio something that might interest you still more. If I can only find it here, it's something I was particularly anxious to bring to your attention. Ah, yes, here we have it. These three from the right collection. Tokubai, Naranobi, and Hiroshige-gate. What you refer to, you know, as the three Hiroshige-gate? Uh, oh, Bert, did you get it? Yes, sir. All the sacks were tied up uh, with cord like that, except one. And that one? Well, somebody must have cut it off, like you said. Say, what have you been up to? All right, Bert, I'll explain later. Oh, Bert, will you stand by Mr. Markham's office, please? Yes, sir. Sergeant, we're getting warm. What do you mean, we're getting warm? From that? Mr. Vance, may I not call your attention to these very... Oh, uh, I'll take the Hiroshige. Three thousand, you said, huh? Right, thank you. Correct. Pardon me. Three thousand bucks for those chromos? What's the psychology in that, Mr. Vance? Sergeant, we're hot. Say, will you please let me in on this string bonfire business? You'll observe, Sergeant, that this twine burns slowly but surely. Oh, would you take that, please? Yeah, no, heat. Oh, 
she has. Good. Yes, Sergeant? Mrs. Banning's confessed. Slowly, but surely. It was to protect Adolf. I went to Benson's room. I pleaded with him. He had the jewel case, so I thought he must have Adolf's confession of forgery and his note, too. Benson laughed at me. There was a gun on the table, so I... I shot him. He went to the door to call, and then he fell. And where was Mr. Marlowe? In one of the guest rooms. Oh, I swear to you, Mr. Marlowe is innocent. Now, Mrs. Banning. Yes? Have you a hairpin? What? A hairpin. Well, yes. May I have it? Thank you. Sergeant Heath's on the wire, Mr. Vance. Is there anyone in the reception room? No, sir. I'll take it there. Hello. Yeah. Oh, just a minute. And what are you doing up? You think I can lie around your apartment with the newspapers panning me about this Benson crime? Where's Sergeant Heath? I can't find him anywhere. I had him on the wire. He's uh, doing something for me. Oh. Also for you. Oh. Yes, Sergeant. Yes. All right. Arrange it for six shots. And you'd better set that clock out there and your watch with mine. I make it just 4.33. Right. Uh, Mr. Vance, uh, if you're through with me, uh, uh, well, I haven't had any lunch yet, and... Oh, uh, I'm terribly sorry, sir. Suppose you eat first, and then pick up that policewoman who's chambermaiding for us at that hotel, will you? All right. Uh, good. What do you think of her confession? Well, more a confession of love than a confession of guilt, don't you think? You mean that she's trying to protect Marla? Well, what else? Sorry. Mr. Gray is here, sir. Send him in. How do you do? Oh, hello. How are you, Gray? Hey, when are you going to play that hand you've been bragging about? Tonight. Would you like to uh, sit in on the game? Table stakes? Anything you say. Now, oh, you say. This will be your party. I don't think so. Markham, I'd like to have all our little group at Benson's Lodge in one hour. And suppose we take along a photograph of Adolf Mahler's fingerprint. Uh, I understand, Ness. I know what you mean, yes. Mahler? You mean to tell me that you were just sitting up there alone when the gun went off? How do you know it was? It was. Oh, this is going to be an interesting hand. Well, what I said was that I was not with Mrs. Ben. I don't want to know where you are not. I want to know where you were. I am a gentleman. Oh, uh, Mr. Delroy? Yes. He was with me. Remarkable fellow, Mahler. Come on, we're not getting any place at all, Van. You'll have your murderer, Markham, by six o'clock. I can't stand much more of this. If you've got anything on me, say it. Uh, this is a rather unusual jewel case of yours, Miss Delroy. Who would you... You know, Markham, Miss Delroy had a better motive for keeping Anthony Benson permanently quiet than any of them. Please, I would like to go. You keep quiet. And you, Albert, hiding your path from the police. I was afraid. I don't blame you. Albert's wife is looking for him. He left her in Chicago recently without giving notice, you might say. How much longer is this comedy going to last, man? In ten minutes, Markham, it won't be comedy. For one of you, it isn't now, is it? But why give me a ringside seat to this seance? If any of you comics have got an idea that I had anybody bump Benson off... You certainly had motive enough, didn't you? What motive? Simply matter of fact revenge for having sold you out on the market. You, the illustrious Harry Gray, the big shot. Vanity and arrogant Markham usually motivate the behavior of the intelligent gunman. Gunman? Look here. But you were with us here when the shot was fired and the body fell. And just before that... I was in the kitchen making coffee. 
That's right, I remember. I remember that it was very overboiled coffee. It must have been on the fire a long time, wasn't it? Great. Gray couldn't have made the coffee that night. I made it for Paula. I wouldn't call me a liar if I were you. Hey, Adolf Mahler made the coffee. And if Mahler did make it, Markham, Mr. Gray was out of this room some five minutes. Uh, doing what? Your dealing. Don't ask me. I'm not. I'm telling you. Mr. Gray didn't make the coffee that night, you know. Who says I didn't? This photograph of the only fingerprints on that freshly unwrapped can of coffee. And this one of your friend, Mahler, prove even to a jury, Markham, that only he touched that coffee can. Oh, stop it! When they took the prints of my fingers this afternoon, I knew you had suspected me. If you are going to accuse me, do it. Oh, this is getting tricky. Oh, two-handed poker isn't so very tricky, do you think? Mr. Gray, just what were you doing while Markham and I sat here that night and Albert came in so mysteriously with your handbag? You tell me. Charm. You crept up those back stairs, tapped on Benson's door. He was changing his collar. You remember, Markham, how it bothered him? Walked in and shot him dead. With one of those imported derringers and silencers of yours. Silencer? <laughs> That's a hot one. You heard the shot while I stood here with you. The shot that killed Benson was silent. No one heard it. Just as no one heard the shot which you fired at me, Gray, and which wounded Mr. Markham. Here at the lodge, however, you arranged for a second shot to explode as Benson's body came tumbling down those stairs. Oh, and I suppose the body waited up there for the second shot. Exactly. You arranged that, too. Just as I have. Oh. Sir Dummy. A oh, Burke. Yes, sir. Supported at the head of the stairs by a piece of twine of the same kind that Mr. Gray cut from a sack of liquor in the basement that night. The twine was caught at the Benson's body and looped around a newel post at the head of the stairs. I knew that the body must have been there for several minutes. But how did you know? Because if Benson had been shot immediately prior to his to down the stairs, there couldn't possibly have been that puddle of blood on the second step from the top, could there? Very interesting. But where were all these people while I was doing this Houdini stuff? Do you think I'd take a chance of being walked in on like that? But what chance were you taking after you saw that Mrs. Banning was resting on the bed in her room? How did you know that? Your hairpin, Mrs. Banning. Thank you. It exactly matches this one, which I found on your pillow up there that night. From the impression of your figure on the bed, you must have been resting there for some time, weren't you? Yes. I was lying there when the shot was fired. Oh, all right. But what about Delroy and Marla? Miss Delroy has already told her, but he told her. It was with her. Discussing uh, her pearls, I should think. Mr. Marla had considerable explaining to do, if you'll remember. You listened outside their door. And what you heard convinced you that they would remain there for several minutes at least. But how could he have timed the shot? As I just did with a dummy. There's another of Benson's cartridge burglar alarms like this one. You used the one Benson had stuck in the door of his storeroom. You got it when you went down to the cellar that night. After you had made sure that you would not be interrupted by Mrs. Banning and the others, you hung the body and the alarm on that twine up there. Then you set fire to a loose end of the twine so that when the flame reached the knot, the twine broke, the body fell, and the alarm dropped to the floor where it exploded like this. You were first upstairs after the body fell. You quickly dropped the derringer behind a newel post, picked up the alarm and the string, put them in your pocket, and told me to do my stuff, wasn't it? Well... He meant to kill Benson, you see, but surrounding it with the props he did was simply uh, camouflage, I suppose, to uh, befuddle the amateur. You're going to have the time of your sweet life trying to hang this on me. The policewoman I used as a chambermaid in your hotel has already hung it on you. She found Miss Delroy's pearl, which you stole that night after the shooting to divert suspicion. Anything else? Oh, yes. The coat you wore, Mr. Gray. It seems that bits of fuzz from the twine you used were on Benson's waistcoat. Also, on the inside of his pocket. 
The same pocket from which I saw you withdraw your hand as I followed you up the stairs. And you know that isn't enough. Do you think any jury would go for that? Well, if not, I know they'll go for this. The clever little silencer that fits your clever little gun. Another trophy from your room, Mr. Gray, also contributed by our policewoman. Is that enough? All right. You outsmarted me, Vance. I'm game. Hey! Look out, he's got a gun! Fire! Stop it, Gray! Well, Mr. Vance, I told you I'd watch over you. Thank you, Sergeant. That baby put three slugs mighty close to me. I better call a doc. I'll, um, I'll wait outside. I haven't been feeling very bad. All right. I'll take care of you, Dolly, dear. Sir, get that coat and cover him. Yes, sir. That's you, Doc? This is Sergeant Heath. I'm out at the Benson Lodge. There's been another murder. I mean, uh, shooting. Uh, I did it. Okay. Mr. Vance, may I have the jewel case now? Oh, of course. And uh, don't worry. No one else knows about your daughter. Thank you. I was going to her when they caught me leaving town. If Benson had found this, he would have held it over me, threatened to tell my little what I am. Thank you, Mr. Vance, for not telling them about her. So it was Harry Gray, Mr. Vance. Well, it didn't, didn't surprise, surprise me, me any. I'm Randall Schaefer. You see me, most of you see me, on YouTube hosting Hastings Mystery Theater. And this shirt honors Hastings Mystery Theater. If you would like a souvenir of this shirt or other similar products, take a look at the description down below. You can get yourself a souvenir. Thank you to all the YouTube people who watch us. We appreciate it. Please consider leaving us your thoughts in the comment section, as well as giving this video a like, and subscribing to our channel. Also, check out the link in the description below. Click the link to enjoy a free bonus Hastings Mystery Theater episode. Thanks again, for your kind support, that enables us to continue bringing you these great old classic black and white movies. Did you know? You can watch Hastings Access Community TV's 24-7 local programming streaming live and on demand on Twitch TV. You can find the link to our Twitch channel in this video's description, or in the top area of our YouTube channel. You might be asking, what kind of programming can I expect to find? In addition to our local government meetings, we also feature music programs and other locally relevant shows. Hastings Mystery Theater comes on most days at 7 a.m. and p.m., our 24-7 program lineup also includes classic TV programs from the 1950s and 60s. Please check it out.
Don't shoot. I have the place surrounded. Then I heard a shot. Then a woman screamed. So you got up, went downstairs, and plugged him. Why did you question that niece of his? She'd be a rich woman once he was in his grave. I've taken care of Woody. He's going away. But when I was at the door, I heard my husband's voice inside. Well, where were you then when the shot was fired? I'm holding you here on suspicion of murder. Because if I'd remained on my feet another moment, I'd have killed him. You miserable, ungrateful, treacherous snake, you! You can't prove anything on me. But I can try. You fork over a hundred and fifty thousand, or I'll raise such a filthy row. And why did you push that woman off the bus? Why did you? Why did you? I didn't! Do you think you're... can keep me out of jail? What was that? Don't go! Don't leave me! Hey, Sam, hey, Sam, what's up? Come here, quickly! 